going on guys we got a suzuki ozark quad runner 250 in the shop and customer brought it in got some clicking going on when he tried to start it and we went through and checked everything and it's going to need a starter so we're going to go through show y'all what you got to do to change the starter on one of these little bikes so on this bike the starter is located in front of the motor and the best way to get to it is you can either take the footwell out and stuff but we're going to take our inner fender out and go into it from this way and i think we can sneak through this way to get it out and sneak through on the other side without taking the inner fender out to get the bolts to hold it in we should be able to slip it out and get it out and put a new one on so let's get started once you get all them rivets out this right here just really just gonna just slide right out of the way now as you can see right here this right here is our starter we got this little dust shield on it right here is where it's going to be that's where it's got its bolt in it that hooks the power up to it so i think we're going to go ahead since this since these inner fenders are not hard to take off at all i think we're going to go ahead and go on the other side and take the inner fender out of that one so we can get over there to get easier access and i can really show y'all what we're doing now that we got this side out so we can show you a little bit better we're going to, have to take this right here loose now you don't have to do this but usually when i'm working with electrical stuff like this i disconnect the batteries just in case you never know what's going on with some of the machines or and some of the stuff so i always like to disconnect my batteries just to be on the safe side Now we've got a heat shield that goes on top of this and there's one bolt on this side for the heat shield and there's another one on the opposite side. So we're gonna get this one out. And of course, like everything else, I drop stuff on the floor like everybody else. Now that we got this one out, we're gonna go around to the other side and one of the bolts that actually holds the starter in holds the other part of this heat shield. And as you can see here, we have our starter and there's one of the bolts on top that holds the heat shield and the starter and then the other bolt on bottom that holds the starter so we're going to remove both of them and get our starter out Okay, so we've got our old starter out right here, and it took a little bit more persuasion than what I thought it would to get it out, but we got it out. Here's our new one, and I've went, and I've put a little bit of grease around this O-ring here just to kind of help it slide up in there a little easier. So what we're going to do now is get this one put on and get it hooked back up and get our heat shield and everything back on it to get this little problem here fixed. So this may be easier to do from the passenger side by taking out the inner fender like I've already done because you get a clear shot at it. But anybody with, I guess, that can work good without seeing something that's done stuff like this before, you can do it from the driver's side. There we go, we got it put up in there, it's locked in place. Now we're gonna get our dust shield, our heat shield and stuff, and get our uh, power wire hooked back up right here. So in order to get this heat shield back on, you've gotta make sure that this rubber grommet on the starter wire is sticking through and make sure the connector on the wire is sticking through. Then you have to feed this up underneath the cylinder so it don't get stuck on any of the fins. And then I'm gonna snug this down with my fingers and then I'm gonna line up my bolts on each side. So we got the starter wire connected, but it isn't tight. We got this bolt right here that holds our heat shield on this side started, but it's not tight. 
So now we're gonna go around to the other side and put our other two bolts that hold the heat shield and that hold our starter in place and put them in. Okay, so we've got our bolt started on this side and the reason why you're not wanting to tighten nothing down yet is when I got over here to this side, the reason why I went ahead and put these in is because it's hard for me to get in here and work and record this at the same time, this area is so tight. But I got over here on this side and the heat shield was out of whack a little bit and I had to push it down. And with the other hand, I had to get up in here and pull the starter just a little bit to fish the bolt in there. And if everything had been tightened down, then nothing would have moved. So now I've got all the bolts in. I'm gonna go ahead and snug these down. Cause I got the bolts in the other side on the heat shield. These bolts here is what holds the starter onto the motor. So we wanna make sure they're good and tight. These are just eight millimeter bolts, so you ain't gotta get too carried away. I'm gonna go around on the other side, tighten that bolt up on the heat shield, and then we'll come back and tighten up our bolt that goes to our starter wire. We got this tightened down, we got our boot back over it, and now it's time to hook our battery back up. Like I said, you don't have to do this, we'll just do it as a precaution. We got everything put back together, except for our inner fender flare. Let's see what. All right, we got everything done. All thing left to do now is put these little inner fender flares, inner fender wells back in. You know, it's just through these little pop rivets. They're gonna come out, go back on the same way you put them on. If y'all fellas like this, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. As always, we appreciate y'all watching.